Hey guys and welcome to another episode of A Healthy Dose of Fran. If you haven't seen on my Instagram, which by the way if you're not following me, the link in the description box below, I recently went to go see Crazy Rich Asians which came out on the Friday just gone here in the UK after huge success in America. The film starred Constance Wu from Fresh Off the Boat, Henry Golding who is going to be in a new film coming soon, A Simple Favour with Anna Kendrick and Blake Lively, Gemma Chan from UK fame in Humans the TV series and the short little series on Channel 4 many many years ago called Dates I think it was where she played a lesbian with Katie McGrath which if you can't tell is the reason why I watched that show. Uh, there was also Michelle Yeoh who unfortunately I've never seen in anything before but as soon as I finish this video, I'm going to go and find everything she was in before. As well as Aquafina, who was in Ocean's 8 earlier this year. The film was directed by John M. Chu, who directed other films like Step Up 2 um, and G.I. Joe. I think it was Retaliation he directed. And if that alone kind of doesn't tickle your fancy, everything else that I've just mentioned should. Because I'm just going to put this out there before even starting this video. Out of all the heterosexual romantic comedies that I've seen, Crazy Rich Asians is my all-time favourite. And I know that I'm going to buy the DVD as soon as it comes out. I'm probably going to go watch it in cinema again. You know, if I've saved up enough money for all the other films I've got to review later this this year. Um, but I'm just going to kind of get into it because there are so many good things about this film. The characters, the soundtrack, the story, just everything about it is 100% amazing. And there are so many quotable lines from it as well. And I'm just kind of going to put a huge spoiler alert here because if you haven't seen this film, first of all, what are you doing with your life? Go watch it now. But then also, you know, kind of finish watching this video and then, you know, go watch it. But you need to see this film either way. So there's going to be a spoiler because I'm going to be talking about big plot points during it. And just, oh, I'm, I'm still kind of in awe from watching this film because it it was an experience either way. And from like kind of like a, a creative writing perspective as well, it was so well written and uh, I wish I'd kind of gotten the name of the writer beforehand before uh, for the screenplay before this but their name will pop up here on screen um, but that's it's so well written everything that happens is so well thought and so well planned and it's a really interesting story and like the concept kind of has been done before you know rich boy or rich girl meets not rich and not uh, boy or girl fall in love family don't approve blah 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 like uh, even real world perspectives we've had like that like no one really approved of, like Kate Middleton who is now obviously Princess Middleton after having married Prince William no one approved of her because she was a commoner and he was royalty and etc etc and there have been films like The Prince and Me which you know, I know not, not the best example because the film was cheesy as anything but kind of like things like that but this film for the first time I think has kind of pulled it off in a way that really makes sense and is really interesting to watch like even though this concept is kind of well done this was a fresh perspective and not just because of the fact that it was an all Asian cast which I think is like the first no not the first American film that's featured in all one but the first since like the 70s or something which is insane either way but impressive and it's that kind of like even though you're aware of it it's kind of not in your face and you you still get caught up in the story either way like the fact that is an all Asian cast obviously was in my mind because it's groundbreaking for Hollywood but you kind of, you just get caught up in the story the way, like, the whole thing is absolutely brilliant. And I'm just going to, oh, I keep rambling on now, oh my god. Okay, so I'll start with the plot. So the whole plot of this is Rachel and Nick Young are in love, they've been together a year. Rachel is a economics professor at Harvard, I think it is. I'm not very well versed in colleges in America I think it's Harvard um, and 
her and Nick, like, they've been together a while and he wants to bring her over to Singapore to meet his family but then also go to his best friend's wedding where he is best man, um, which we get from the trailer either way. Um, the moment this conversation is brought up, Radio Asia is uh, comes in because someone who recognises Nick Young sends a picture of him with the girl and it's spread across the entire nation of Singapore and everyone finds out about it, then his mum finds out about it, she calls Nick, they're still there at the restaurant where they're chatting, and so it works incredibly fast, like, Jesus Christ. Um, and that's kind of how everything kind of gets into the swing of it. They head over, this is when she finds out that he's rich, because, which again, we also see in the trailer, because she sees that they're in first class, and he's like, yeah, no, we're, we're comfortable. Like, honey, you're more than comfortable. Um, and uh, the whole thing kind of carries on. We then meet Aquafina, who is called, I'm going to pronounce this really badly, Pick or Pick or something, uh, Picklin. Oh, Picklin. Picklin, that's it. Um, uh, who is Rachel's friend from college. Um, they then tell her, yeah, Nick Young isn't just anyone. He's like the royal family here in Singapore. And Rachel's like, what the hell? She then goes to the party that they've got for Nick coming back, which was supposed to be a small family thing, but has then turned out to be a humongous thing. Everyone's there. She's kind of she's kind of going with it. She seems to be working quite well with what's going on. And then a few embarrassing moments happen where like um she mistakes the cook for Nick's nan and she kind of makes a few situations awkward where they ask what her father does and she's like, Yeah, he did. Um, and it just kind of, everything moves on. We've also at this point have met briefly Astrid, who is Nick's cousin, who uh, Gemma Chan plays. Um, I loved her the moment I saw her. She's an absolute babe. Um, we also meet her husband, Michael, who straight off the bat I was like, mm, he seems like a dick. Which then turns out to be true because he's also having an affair. This is all happening alongside the story of Rachel and Nick, etc, etc. Um, we then also meet uh, his brothers, whose name, I think his name's Eddie, one of them. He's a bit of a dick as well. Everyone's a bit, a bit of a dick, really. And then we meet Eleanor Young, who is Nick's mother. Um, she seems to come off really polite and straight off the way. I was like, okay, okay, I know what's happening here. She is coming across polite, but secretly she's judging Rachel. And straight away, as soon as I leave, Rachel's like, yeah, she hates me, and I'm like, cool with that shit. Um, so everything's kind of moving really quickly. Then it looks like the nan likes Rachel, um, being as in it looks like it. And things just keep moving on and on and on. Then there's a moment where, that we also see in the trailer, where uh, Nick's mum says she'll never be worthy of him. This has happened afterwards, after um, Rachel has been invited to Nick's friends, Collins, fiancés, bridal shower, bride, bridal party, I can't remember, oh, head night, that's it, uh, or at least that's what we call it here in the UK, I don't know what they call it in America or anywhere else. Um, <laughs> I'm, got, I'm out of breath from going through all of this. So they're all psychotic assholes. They like, they, they do this whole thing, they, they gut a fish and put it in her bed and say, catch this, you gold digging bitch. And I'm like, what the fuck? This is a crime. You've just broken into her hotel room. Rach is flipping out. Astrid's just seen what's happened. And it's like, what? What? And then of course they do a really sweet thing and they bury the fish. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, this is both sweet but also kind of weird. Um, this is when also Rachel finds out about Michael, who is Astrid's husband, is having an affair, and she's like, oh shit, I'm so sorry. <laughs> then Nick, um, at, um, okay, this is the bit where I start to like Nick a little bit less briefly. Um, when Rachel tells him what happened, he kind of doesn't, and uh, she's mad that she doesn't, uh, that he hadn't told her what they were like, because he didn't seem that surprised, and she's like, dude, why didn't you fucking tell me what they were like? He was like, oh my god, I'm so well, he doesn't actually say sorry, so that's a bit that I don't like. Nick, you should have said sorry. But anyway, moving on to the rest of it. So, Mother says that she'll never be worthy. Rachel's like, what the fuck? Um, 
it's just things are kind of moving on everything seems to be going a little bit wrong and then there is they're at the wedding and Rachel kind of she's just like you know what I'm gonna show this woman I'm gonna show that I'm worthy of Nick and in the ceremony the mother then sees the two of them clearly in love and really care rain for each other and I'm like oh, okay she's gonna change but this is when we find out that the nan doesn't like Rachel she also kind of condemns Nick saying you will not marry beneath you and I'm like hold up what is happening here oh my god this this old woman is a douche and then it turns out that Eleanor did a background check with a private investigator into Rachel's mum this is when Rachel then finds out that her dad isn't actually dead but her mum ran away to America because she had an affair and she got pregnant with Rachel. Um, Rachel is devastated and she's like, Nick, I can't be here anymore. You don't have to worry about me. I'm going to leave. So she leaves and runs away and she goes to Pickleyan's house and just kind of stays there. And she's kind of like in this depressive state where she just, she's not really eating. She's kind of like really struggling. Because obviously it's a horrible thing. Like not only has she had her mum's past exposed to her and her entire life has turned out to be a lie, the man that she loves, family, have vindictively gone against her and kind of attempted to ruin... Like, they've kind of ripped the rug out from underneath her. Nick kind of didn't really help. Like, he didn't... Like, he was mad. He was, like, yelling at them and stuff. But he didn't put a stop to it early enough, which I think is kind of why she ended up a lot angrier and just wouldn't talk to him. Uh, her mum then arrives and it turns out Nick has flown her mum out. We then find out that her mum was actually in an abusive relationship and she fell in love with another man. And she fled to America because she was worried that her husband would kill her and Rachel if he found out. Um, so it was actually a horrible story. She then um, goes to meet Nick because her mum says it's probably best because he did fly me out here. Nick proposes. She turns him down. Not that we see it at this point. She then goes and meets his mum. And this is the bit that we see in the trailer. Where she's like, if he chooses me, he loses his family. But if he chooses his family, he may end up presenting you. And I'm like, whoa. Because in the film, it is a lot more dramatic than anything else. And at this point, she makes the decision that for him to be happy, she will step away. Because she doesn't want him to have to choose between her and his family. No one should have to choose that. Um, and she gets up and she leaves. And Eleanor's like, she kind of comes to respect her in a way that she would willingly ruin her own happiness to make sure that Nick wouldn't have to make that choice. And we then see this bit where they're heading to the airport. Nick and his mum are kind of like stood together. We don't really know what's happening. There's no kind of conversing going on. And then he turns up at the airport. And there was this scene earlier in the film to do with like the rings that uh, that Eleanor has that was the engagement ring her husband gave. And we've learned that the nan didn't actually approve of Eleanor. So refused to give her son her engagement ring, which is like a tradition passed down, to give to Eleanor. So he had to get another one. And when Nick turns up, he proposes to her again, but with the ring that Eleanor had. So her engagement ring. And it, it's kind of her saying that I, I, I've gotten over my ego and I can see that you guys are right for each other. And it's like, yes. And it's a beautiful moment. I nearly cried multiple times during this film. And not only that, there was like the soundtrack that's going on along the side. And it's like, oh my God. But what's also happening, okay, this is the quotable moment I'm talking about here. So Astrid has confronted Michael, her husband, about the affair on the way to the wedding because he says that he's not going to be there for their son's birthday. Which, by the way, just side note, this guy's having an affair when they've got children. Like an affair cheating in general is not acceptable, but when there's a child involved, you're a monster. Um, <laughs> and he said that he's basically he's going to go meet his mistress on the day of their son's birthday and miss his son's birthday. That's when she confronts him. He basically tries to put the blame on her, saying that you never accepted me because he, he he was like a commoner too. He wasn't rich. He didn't come from money. And he basically puts all the blame on her, saying, well, you, you know, you always tried to hide your wealth from me. Like, you clearly didn't think I was worthy of you or something. She's like, 
no that wasn't the reason and it's just like you shouldn't put trying to tone don't put the blame on me he continues to do it because he's a dick then near the end of the film her and her son are leaving he talks about how he was going to leave the house he's like no you bought this one i own 14 other apartments i can take one of those um well apartment complexes because she rich um she then talks about that how she gave so many things up for him because she didn't want to make him feel unworthy or unhappy and this is the line that i love the most she says to him it's not my duty to make you feel like a man i can't make you feel what you're not and i was like holy shit yes girl and just like that that line that that bit in it that kind of like that was the moment for me i was like this is going to be my all-time favorite film of all time astrid is a beautiful person and a beautiful human being blah, 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 blah. but kind of like everything that happened look like at so kind of like the ending was a little bit rushed for me but that's literally the only negative i have and then also there's like oliver who is the rainbow in all of the happiness that is going on um he played by Nico Santos and oh my god he's the one that we see in the film where he's like someone needs to stand up to Artie Elena god not me and I absolutely love him he's a hilarious character but he's really sweet as well and he's generally a great character too just oh this cast in general and all of the characters they are so well created they actually have depth which is incredibly hard to find in characters in romantic comedies more often than not they're so two-dimensional two they're all about i must find a man to love blah 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 it's like, oh shut the fuck up um oh my god i'm getting so aggressive <laughs> um but oh there's, there's there's so much depth to the entirety of this film and also singapore is beautiful like I've always wanted to visit like the Far East in general just because there are so many great there's such great architecture there as well but this has just made me want to go even more and oh my gosh it, there's the camera angles and the visuals for it that like even the dimensions of character and visuals is huge the cinematography is brilliant there's that whole scene that we do see in the trailer as well where Eleanor forces Rachel to step back so she is kind of below her and she's above and that visual for showing that Eleanor has the upper hand is brilliant and just they have so many moments like that during the film and I, I need to calm down a little bit because I, I am really emotional about this whole film because it was so brilliant and the soundtrack is just as amazing like Keena Granis who I've known since YouTube and I love her voice and I love her music she performs the song uh, uh, the wedding can't help falling in love which is obviously the Elvis song and it's so beautiful and like I was nearly crying during because not only is that song playing whilst Rachel and Nick are looking at each other and showing that even just with looks there's kind of no real words or anything like that it's just kind of looking she's crying he's nearly crying and it's also going on at the same time it's like Colin and Colin's fiance whose name I currently can't remember they're crying as well because they're about to get married and be with the person they love and it's just such a great moment all of the soundtrack is absolutely brilliant like the, the wedding songs that are going on oh, i can't remember who sings them now either but it's on the soundtrack so i suggest getting the soundtrack as well oh my god this film is just absolutely brilliant and if you haven't seen it see, seen it please do it needs like it's done so well in the US and I want it to do so well here in the UK as well because not only is it helping to support UK actresses and actors with like Chema Chan and things like that it's just a great story and a great film like I, <laughs> I'm gonna have to stop because I'm I can see that I'm nearly up to like uh, I'm basically at 20 minutes because I've got to do my ending bit but it is a good film and I'm so happy that I enjoyed this. There was literally nothing I hated about this film or found a real negative in it. And yeah, that is my review of Crazy Rich Asians. And go see it, seriously. As always, guys, thank you so much for supporting my channel and for watching this video. If you're not already subscribed, hit the button down below or the one that will be popping up on screen. If you don't want to see this ugly mug more often than you have to, go to the description box below where you can find my Instagram and my blog link. 
Um, if you want to watch any of my other videos though, they'll be popping up here on screen as suggestions. Um, again, thank you so much. Now go and watch Crazy Rich Asians, you won't regret it. And I'll see you guys next time.